Good morning again, and welcome to the Washington County Chamber of Commerce's annual Municipal Leaders Roundtable virtual breakfast. I'm Jeff Catula with the Washington County Chamber. It's my pleasure this morning to welcome you to our annual event where we hear from our community leaders discussing items that are important in their communities around Washington County. Before we start, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Moody & Associates. Moody & Associates provides a full range of environmental and geological consulting, along with water well, pump installation, and maintenance services for a full range of customers. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring this morning's event, as well as welcome especially Jeff Wolontoski, their president, who I know is watching. Jeff's been a big supporter of the chamber, and we appreciate that as well. Our moderator for this morning is Senator Camera Bartolotta from the 46th Senatorial District. Camera, good morning to you. Unmuted. There we are. That's better. Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning, Senator. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks so much for putting this together. I um, oh, appreciate it. We appreciate you moderating. First, before we start, how have you been and how's everything in Harrisburg? Uh, well, I was just there this week and uh, we, we set up way back in March the ability to vote remotely via Zoom and that has worked out fairly well. Um, uh, as of late, um, when I have bills to present on the floor, I choose to be there instead. And when I have committee hearings that I chair, that's when I go in physically and uh, am on the floor. But it's going very well. It's going very well. Well, I'm glad to hear that and glad you're well as well. So, uh, Senator, I'm going to let you take it away and let you introduce our panel and uh, have a great discussion. Thank you very, very much. Good morning, everyone. And thanks for being here uh, remotely, as we said. Our panelists uh, consist of Paul Lauer from Peters Township, Tyler Linick from South Franklin Township, Jody Noble, Chartiers Township, Brandon Stanick, South Strabane Township, Andrew Waltz, North Strabane Township. I, I thank you all for being here. And to start things off, I'd like to throw it back to, to all of you for our panelists and ask you if you might just share with us by giving us a quick update of any major projects and infrastructure improvements that are currently underway in your townships. And as a follow-up to that, um, are these infrastructure projects focused more on expanding commercial real retail or residential development, or is it a good mix of those? And uh, we'll start with you, Paul, if you would. Yes. Um, what I'd like to speak about is uh, projects that are occurring that aren't the kind of projects that get people in the community excited, but quite frankly, expand the community's capacity to continue to grow and develop. Uh, the Peters Township Sanitary Authority is just finishing a project to um, increase uh, the size of the interceptors that service the, the new um, sewage treatment plant that is located in the Donaldson's Crossroads area. Um, the importance of that is that it allows for the capacity to continue residential and commercial development. In a similar fashion, um, the Sanitary Authority is increasing the size of the interceptor that services the brush run service uh, treatment plant, which is going to facilitate the, um, the uh, expansion of the um, uh, high school and the new park that is to be developed. On the other side of town, uh, is serviced by the Peters Creek Sanitary Authority. Um, all of that sewage is treated by the Claret Municipal Authority and they have a major plant expansion underway. And so as a result of those activities, uh, what we see is our capacity to, to continue to develop is there. The other thing that's occurring out there is that the township has recently acquired a piece of property. We will be building a, an additional fire station in the near future. That station uh, will be staffed by both career and uh, volunteer firefighters. And then finally, next week, uh, we're going to be throwing the switch on a new um, emergency communication system, which will be a state-of-the-art communication system for emergency uh, service providers, uh, and, and in our case, that's the police, fire, and, and ambulance service. So those are kind of projects that are out there. Those are kind of things that normally residents can't see, but what, they, what the fact of the matter is it impacts them greatly. Thank you. I'll throw it over to you, Tyler. Yeah, thank you, Senator. Uh, we're still working on our uh, public sewage project. That's our big thing that we're really, really trying to get our, the first one, you know, within the township. Uh, we've got our final design uh, submitted to DEP, hopefully get our permits sometime this year, which will allow us to apply for funding, which is very exciting. 
um, because the, the first phase of our project does incorporate all of the commercial, industrial, flex, and mixed use zones in, in the township, as well as some residential, which was the main focus of it really was to kind of ease all of the failing systems in the, in the rural area that we have and get them on a, a public system. So we're hoping we can get some funding for that. It's going to be uh, a battle getting grant funding for what we need uh, to get the project and make it viable for our residents. So we're hoping to get that going on. And then another little project is I'm hoping to get our dog park built this summer uh, in our park, just to throw up some fencing and just allow people to bring their pets and, and let them roam free for a while. So, cause I know there's not many in the area that I'm aware of at least. So I'd like to just add a little something else to our park that we try every year. So those are the two, I guess, main things we got going on. All right, thank you, Tyler. Uh, how about Jody Noble from Chartiers? Yes, um, well, this year we're doing a, a rather robust road paving program, um, including the complete reconstruction of Arthur Road, um, which was definitely in need of not just paving, but it needed to be <coughs> um, rebuilt. Uh, so we will be working on that as well as we have a stormwater project on McLean Farm Road to assist with stormwater, which has been um, a nagging issue um, throughout the township, in particular in that area. We also have that we will be, um, the contractor will be working on our Arnold Park ball field and our phase one of construction of a new uh, field, an athletic field in the township in Arnold Park, which will be our first athletic field in that park. And uh, we're hoping it will find a lot of use for our residents. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Brandon Stanick, your update. Good, good morning. Um, earlier this year, we completed, we were able to complete uh, several projects, one of which was the construction of a cold storage uh, building for our public works department. And by doing that, that allowed us to um, clean up the area that, uh, that we own for our recycling yard and yard facility that is along um, I-70. Uh, so we were able to demolish uh, two or three uh, structures down there that were dilapidated and then ultimately bring up that equipment to a, a better facility on the hill next door to the uh, actual public works facility. And with that um, cleaning up of that yard, we were able to create a more robust yard waste, uh, yard and landscape waste uh, type of facility for residents as an amenity, as well as uh, we currently have a glass recycling program that we hope to in the in the future um, also relocate that to that facility as well. So doing that has helped us provide additional services and amenities for our residents. Um, earlier this year also they uh, we had completed a, a sewer extension project along Floral Hill Drive um, to connect into Community Park, which will allow us to uh, to go ahead and construct a kitchen and bathroom. Um, structure for that uh, for that heavily used asset of ours. Um, we are currently out to bid now, and we hope to that bid opening will be on Monday. So it'll be interesting to see what comes in for that. So stay tuned. Um, also this year, uh, we it, it was being planned the resurfacing of Tanger Boulevard, uh, coming off a of racetrack road and adjacent to the Tanger Outlet Center. Um, this uh, is a is a project that has uh, being facilitated by the uh, by the funding from the local share program through the county, um, and will help us economic development wise uh, go ahead and help initiate that development of that 152 acres across from the Tanger Outlet Center. So we look forward to that, um, and also we're, we are doing some stormwater storm sewer. Uh, replacement projects, uh, specifically at Locust and Berry intersections, as well as on Clare Drive. Um, and again, we, we continue with a robust uh, uh, paving program, but we want to pay particular attention to and prioritize uh, the uh, reconstruction or the resurfacing of those portions of Clare Drive that had slipped earlier this year. Very good. Thank you very much for that update. Now, um, Andrew, under Good morning. Your update. Good morning. morning. Uh, in North Germain, uh, we have uh, various uh, major projects in uh, many different stages of development. Um, our paving program this year, we're also looking at a, a very comprehensive paving program uh, that should be over a million dollars. 
Um, and we look forward to that starting here in the next few months. Um, that was actually bid out and awarded earlier this year prior to the COVID pandemic. Um, and we're looking forward to kind of get, getting that started here over the summer. Um, in addition to that, um, last year we purchased um, a large parcel of property from 84 Lumber uh, down in the 84 area of the township um, to construct a third fire station. Um, and just last week we received all of our necessary permitting from the DEP in order to get that project off the ground. So we anticipate that uh, that third fire station is going to uh, begin construction uh, sometime in early June. And then uh, we look at that being about a 10 to 11 month uh, construction. Um, so we're very excited to get that underway. Um, and much like Peter's, that will be staffed by volunteers as well as career firefighters. Um, once that is constructed, uh, we're gonna be able to temporarily locate uh, the uh, operations of our fire department on Route 19 uh, to that 84 area. And at that point, uh, we would uh, demolish the uh, station on Route 19. And the goal there is to build a new public safety building uh, that would house uh, our fire department as, um, our, as our main station, as well as um, our police department. Um, in addition to that, uh, we're looking to build a new administrative building here. Um, North Shaban, as everybody knows, is, is kind of grown rapidly over the last 20 years and, and staffing has, has been no different. Um, so uh, we're, we're cramped here and looking to, uh, to get a new admin building moving and that'll be something that, that's in the planning phases along with the public safety building on 19 um, over the next few years. And then uh, on a smaller note, uh, we're excited. Uh, we obviously had our landslides in Majestic Hills two years ago and we're excited that uh, this summer we, we've been able to work through some easements and whatnot and we're gonna be in a position to restore permanently stormwater and sewage um, more practically uh, into that into that area. It's kind of been operating on a temporary basis for the last two years. So excited about to get that project completed this summer. Fantastic, all good news from everyone. Um, I'm just reminding those that are, are sharing the, uh, the time with us, if you have questions, look to the bottom of your Zoom screen and you will see a and a so If you click on that, you will be able to type in your question for some of our panelists. And if you would direct them to each individual, one panelist or, or another, or for all of them as a broad question, we can address those as we move ahead. So now we'll move to the, uh, the, the specific questions for each of you that we have. Um, so Mr. Link, um, how will the infrastructure developments in South Franklin tie into expanding the Washington County Airport? Um, as, and as a follow-up to that, we've seen in the past year that the county is investing in the expansion and modernization of the county airport. What kind of opportunities for growth do you see uh, for South Franklin related to that? And I don't know if people know this or not, but uh, that, that was the airport where I learned how to fly. So I'm the only private pilot in the Senate. So <laughs> I love the airport. So I'm very, very curious about your answer. Yeah, we, the, the, our project does incorporate the airport into, into our plan there in the first phase in the northern part of our township there. So access will be provided on the um, this eastern portion there on 18 as, long, as well as the western portion on off of Moore Road. Uh, there'll be access as well to get both the southern and the northern sides of the airport, hopefully to get rid of their holding tanks and, and things up there. Uh, we're really just hoping that the county kind of will reopen their idea of funding our, our project. They kind of have wavered a little bit on providing some funding for us. So we're trying to reopen and negotiate with them again to get some of that grant funding from them uh, because we're really, really going to be re dependent on the grant money that we get to keep the project viable, to keep the, the cost low for our residents. Um, so other than that, uh, we do have some commercial lots in the, air, in the township, mixed use, industrial flex that will be made viable again because they're smaller lot sizes than right now without public sewage, they can't really incorporate buildings and a self-contained sewage system, you know, septic system on that property. So it'll, it'll really help bring some more businesses to, to the township as well as help our residents um, just get out of their own sewage business and basically just kind of pay a, a monthly bill and hopefully increase the property values of some of their homes as well as we move forward. So. We're excited to see some growth. We just gotta get it moving forward, get some funding to make it happen. All right, well, thank you very much. This question is for Paul. Pierce Township is partnering with the school district to develop the new high school campus and the township park. Can you provide us with an overview and an update on the project? And was the timeline impacted by the COVID crisis? You know what, uh, if, if we could, there is a slide that shows the uh, school district property and the township property. 
the other slide, please. So um, a few years back, the Rolling Hills Country Club um, was in financial difficulty and that property, which consists of about 200 acres, came up for sale. If you're familiar with Peters Township, this, this piece of property is rather unique in that it is located uh, along East McMurray Road. And East McMurray Road, to a large part, is an educational corridor for the Peters Township School District. So the school district um, uh, board members, as well as Peter Sanchez Council, um, decided that, that uh, the community would best be served if this property was brought into public ownership. So the school district has gone ahead with um, the construction of a new high school. And if you have the opportunity to drive down East Victoria Road, you will see that, that that project is well along its way. The intention was um, that that building be um, occupied at, over the Christmas break of, of this year. Um, they were on schedule to be able to do that. Um, of course, uh, construction on that site was hampered uh, as a result of COVID-19. Um, they believe there still may be a chance that they could actually meet that target. You actually have some building trades working two shifts inside that building right now uh, to, to be able to meet that, um, that target date. And in fact, uh, at this point, classrooms are actually being finished on the inside of the building. Uh, there's a lot of work left to be done on the outside. To be able to service that high school, uh, Peters Township and the Peters Township School District are working together uh, to develop the road, a new road that bisects the property. This will be Rolling Hills Drive. Uh, this project's unique in that it requires the relocation of a portion of um, uh, East McMurray Road to, to take it off of alignment. Uh, has, been, has been told to us by uh, the people at District 12 of PennDOT, this is the largest project they've ever had that is being done under a highway occupancy permit. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's, it's a complicated project in, in terms of the relocation of the intersection. Um, as of this week, we believe it's fully permitted, so that will be uh, moving ahead. It's currently under contract. The, portion, the other portion of the project is the development of the park itself. And if we can go to the other slide, <clears throat> we are in the process of uh, obtaining permits for the phase one development of the park. And what that largely will consist of is the construction of the roadway that loops around the park, as well as the area that's referred to as the Great Lawn, which is um, really a picnic area. Uh, what this will do is um, the, the, along the loop road, we'll bring in all the utilities that will allow us to um, um, eventually uh, construct the facilities that you see um, uh, on, the, um, on the diagram. We are currently in the process of accepting requests for proposals for the, uh, uh, for the design of the aquatics facility. That's going to be a discussion that council is going to be having uh, early this summer as, as to whether or not we'll be moving ahead with, with that end of the project. So. So it's a really exciting project. I know the community, uh, it's, it's, it's a large part of the conversation that's occurring inside the community and we look forward to it, so. Great, thank you. Just technology, my screen had the map on there for a while, so I'm looking for the next question here. Uh, this next question is for Andy. North Strabane has seen a tremendous growth over the past 10 to 15 years, as you were alluding to in your, your opening comments. How does the township work to balance that growth with the needs of the longtime residents who are seeking a more rural lifestyle? Sure. So, um, as I did mention, I mean, people seem to want to live in North Strabane, and, and quite frankly, I, I'm amazed at the number of building permits that we continue to, to uh, process here at the, uh, as we get through, through the COVID crisis. Um, but uh, I, over the last five years, the board's been very aggressive um, in, in trying to um, make that more of a smart growth, I would, I would say. Um, it, it, over the last three years, we actually adopted a new zoning ordinance. And the zoning ordinance, I think, is, is very effective in, in the fact that it really is realistic uh, that people do want to live here, but also that there is that, that rural nature to North Germain Township. So if you look at our zoning map, uh, really, a dense population area is going to be is permitted uh, kind of along the 19 corridor. And then as you move to 84, uh, you know, towards the 84 area, it becomes uh, less and less dense allowable. 
Um, so that that's kind of uh, the plan and the vision that the board had uh, whenever they adopted that zoning ordinance, whenever the uh, committee put that together over the last five years. Um, in addition to the zoning ordinance, as soon as that was adopted, um, we actually moved to update our uh, grading ordinance as well as our stormwater ordinance um, for the first time, I think, since the early 90s. Um, so those, those are uh, both new ordinances that have been in effect for about uh, six to eight months now. Um, and uh, we're working through uh, those with, with developers as, as they come in. Um, but I think it, it, that both updating both of those ordinances also helps to lend uh, to uh, less density and, and more of a, a rural feel. Um, and finally, um, just this past month, we actually updated our subdivision and land development ordinance, um, again, uh, for the first time since 1995. So we, we just wanted to update kind of that package of, of development ordinances um, to help preserve that rural nature while also um, recognizing that there are people out there who want to sell their property. Uh, there's people who want to move into North Strabane. Um, so again, it's not uh, impossible to develop property in the 84 area. But if, you, if you're getting into those areas, you're looking at more half acre lots, one acre lots, et cetera. Um, so uh, we actually do have our first development uh, that's going through the planning uh, stages right now, um, further down 519, uh, that will be uh, a minimum half acre lot. Um, and we're kind of excited to see how that, how that plays out. Very good. Jody, this question is for you. Expanding on Andrew's last answer, Short Tears is another growing township but maybe a little earlier in the growth curve than North Strabane or Peters Township. How does your township balance the needs of its citizens who enjoy the rural character of your township with the need for residential and recreational and business growth, all while maintaining that character of the township, which attracted the people there in the first place? Sure, yes, you're, you are correct. Um, historically, Chartiers Township is a rural community and still a lot of the township remains that way. Um, although we have experienced growth over the last number of years. We've been very fortunate that our growth has been um, steady, but at a manageable pace so that we can um, try to keep up with, with that growth. Um, last year, we had a record setting uh, number of building permits issued. I think we broached um, North Strabane's numbers last year. So <clears throat> our growth continues. Um, we are also fortunate in the way our township is configured with access to two uh, highway interchanges uh, with our commercial area uh, busted right there. And then uh, the rest of the municipality can still maintain that rural character. So if you get into some of the um, outer edges of Chartiers Township, it looks very different than it does closer uh, to those interchanges. So we try to, to balance that way. We are currently, um, reviewing our comprehensive plan and updating that. Um, and this one I'm sure will look very different than the one uh, that was done 10 years ago so that uh, we can address the issues that are, are coming before us today. Um, on a regular basis, we review our ordinances. You know, We view them as, as living documents and that they need adjusted. If we start to see a lot of issues arising in a, a certain area, we, we adapt our ordinances. Um, to meet the needs of, of our residents and try to keep a balance um, to welcome our new residents, but make sure we maintain the respect uh, of our existing residents. Thank you, Jenny. This one is for Brandon. The recruitment and retention needs of local volunteer firefighter, uh, fighter fighters and EMS companies have been trumpeted by municipal leaders for many years now. How is South Strabane doing in that regard? And what are some ways that we could support and incentivize the recruitment and retention of volunteers? That reminds me, we just uh, passed a bill that allows for our uh, volunteer fire companies and EMS to uh, get some additional funding. Because as we all know right now, they can't fundraise. So it's important to, that we support them. And in what ways do you, do you see that happening? Oh, that's a very good question and a very, uh, a very uh, strong bit of a crisis in, in the state. I, I just want to start to address that by stating that when the Senate Resolution 6 uh, Commission released their report in 2018, um, we, we saw some sombering figures. Um, and this isn't, the, this isn't the, the first time that we've seen the declines in volunteerism uh, on, on the fire and EMS level. Um, 
I think in the 70s, we were at uh, 300,000 um, and down to 60,000 in the early 2000s. And that report did also uh, uh, communicate that as of soon as 2018 or as recently as 2018, we're, we're down to 38,000 statewide. And that's a bit alarming. And it is appreciated that the state has, has taken up this issue in, uh, in, a, in a very serious manner. I think uh, on the local level, with South Tremaine, we are experiencing that same phenomenon. We have a, a career department and a volunteer department, a career department of uh, nine that works with the volunteers to serve the community. And we have about 12 members um, that are non-career volunteers in that company. Um, three of those 12 support uh, are, are currently in supporting roles. We also have four strong social members that also are able to provide a valuable service to that company. Um, putting that into perspective, you know, over the past 17 years, we have seen a decrease of over 50% in volunteer firefighters. Um, however, on a more positive note, in the last three years, we've, we've seen five new members have joined. Um, and then two have their certifications and qualifications um, in training to, to fully respond to, to incidents. So, you know, we are most thankful for that. However, um, those numbers are uh, pale in comparison to what we previously had. Uh, South Strabane, <clears throat> in the last two years, we did implement um, and made the Act 172 fire tax credit available and we did that to the maximum that the state would allow and that's that's a 20 percent credit um, for the township's portion of the real estate tax bill as well as an in earned income tax credit of up to 500 dollars i th there is a challenge with these incentives that are being offered specifically with act 172 um, the limits are, are put on by the commonwealth and may not be incentive enough moving forward and or incentive enough to go ahead and compensate for the significant amount of time and the commitment that it takes to be that modern day firefighter, volunteer or career. Um, we've also explored with our uh, volunteers uh, a paper call incentive structure, um, which does present challenges due to a, a recent state Supreme Court ruling in, in the borough of Emmaus. Um, so that is also alarming to us to move in that direction. Um, two things specifically, <clears throat> one of which we are, we are looking to get a final report before the end of the year, um, is we have partnered with eight other agencies that surround us. That is Chartier's Township and its, uh, and its volunteer company. That's the city of Washington with its career force, uh, South Strabane and its volunteers as well as North Franklin and its volunteers and Canton and its company as well. So with that approach, what we hope, what we have studied in this led by the consultant with the DCED is that we need to understand how we can work better together and help facilitate uh, the use of those resources, specifically human resources that are, that are dwindling. Um, so we hope to have that report uh, before the end of the year, given, given the pandemic uh, that, that may be delayed, but um, we'll, we'll be uh, looking forward to receiving those results. The second thing, and a, a most important thing locally for South Strabane, is that we have uh, planned this year a, uh, a strategic planning initiative with our volunteer department. Um, and we would like to continue to move forward with that, although it has been delayed. But we hope to understand by doing this and engaging in a, in a, in a uh, professional consult, how fire and emergency services will look in the future for the township. Uh, there are several facets to that. And uh, one is how our service is going to be provided. We wanna be most economic, most efficient, most effective and equitable. Um, we want to talk about uh, how are we modernizing our facilities, um, our uh, an assessment of the condition of our apparatus and equipment, uh, staffing partnerships, you know, including training and including a more robust recruitment effort, um, and also budgeting and, and planning for those future capital expenses that, that we all know are significant in the fire service. Um, 
there's a bit of comfort in knowing that the state has continued to study these uh, these issues and are working to establish those additional incentives um, through executing the recommendations on our SR6. Uh, however, I, I would like to take that a step further and given that due to societal changes, demographics, that volunteer model has changed to the point that we, uh, we need to move in understanding how to continue to provide services and we see with, with that structure changing, um, those services are in jeopardy. So what I would like and, and to truly support the volunteerism of a community, specifically a fire department that is a, that typically are bedrocks of community, um, you know, it's gonna require more than incentives. And, um, and more of a commitment to understanding how best to modernize a fire service delivery model um, for those services. Those services are not gonna go away. Um, the demand for those services are only gonna increase. The expectations will only increase. And um, it will be, uh, let's not limit ourselves to only looking at incentives, but let's, let's move forward in understanding the entire structure and system of providing those services. Thank you. And uh, ju just quickly, if any of our other leaders would like to <clears throat> echo those sentiments or add to them about uh, that last question, I, I invite you to do so. Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I actually think in the case of North Stromain and Peters Township, what we have is the model that, that works. Um, I, I think these kind of services are difficult to continue to deliver simply um, by a single community. Um, and so in uh, the case of North Strabane, in the case of Peters Township, when there are critical incidents, when there are fire structures, you have responses by the career volunteer staff of each community into the other automatically. And I think, you know, to, to be able to, to continue to provide this in a era where volunteer service is challenged, um, we need to be working together. And um, this partnership with North Strabane um, has turned out to be to everyone's benefit. They, the residents of Peters Township are the beneficiaries of this, as are the residents of North Strabane. And I think to, to echo that, Paul's 100% right. I mean, we our departments work very well together. Um, you know, part of that is they train together. Part of that is Peters Township constantly steals our firemen. Um, so they used to work together. Um, but, uh, you know, it is a great working relationship. I, I can 100% say that it is absolutely the model, I think, for the future. Um, but it's not a cheap model. Um, but I mean, fire service is something that, that we all need. Um, we all like to support. Um, and it is worth it at the end of the day. Um, and I'll also echo that, that we're actually pretty proud. We actually have a very good working relationship between our volunteers and our, and our career staff um, to the point that they meet together every Monday night. They train together every Monday night. Um, and uh, it, it's a seamless transition. Um, it's the same training, the same expectations, whether you're a career or volunteer in North Germain. And we're lucky we have 35 volunteers um, and uh, all pretty active. In fact, one of the things I always kid the guy, the, the firefighters, when I go into the station, because the volunteers and the career firefighters are so intertwined, I walk into the station and I can't tell you who the heck the volunteer is and who the career firefighter is. And you really need to be able to get to that point uh, to make that, that model we have work, so. Excellent, Any, anyone else on that? question because it's a great segue into our next one. The next question to, to all of you is, uh, it, it echoes the, the sentiments you just shared about combining resources and working closely together. Um, uh, the cost of running local government is not cheap. Public works, police, recreation, planning, and code enforcement, and these are all crucial functions and services that we all rely heavily upon. What are some of the ways that local governments have creatively combined services on purchasing powers? And given the budgets only seem to get higher, get tighter, um, what opportunities do you see for the future of regional cooperation and service sharing? Who'd like to chime in? Jody, do you have a comment? Um, well, we always, uh, we work together very well. That's the one thing I can say about local government um we really don't view ourselves as competitors but more um you know neighbors helping neighbors 
and uh, that has traditionally uh, worked very, very well, um, even on an informal basis. And as things get tougher and we have to do more with less, we all tend to look towards each other at ways, how can we partner, how can we help, how can we share services, jointly purchase things um, to better serve our residents at a lower cost. So the, the groundwork is there and we just continue to, um, to develop that. Great. Anyone else? In the case of Peter Township, we participate in the South Hills Area Council of Governments. It's a, uh, a consortium of municipalities in the, the, that are in the um, South Hills of Pittsburgh. Part of that, that uh, program is a co cooperative purchasing uh, program. So we're buying all types of commodities on joint purchases uh, to attempt to get better prices. But in addition to that, um, the South Hills Area Council of Government actually bid services. So um, garbage service is actually a service that's built bid jointly and that contract that's issued by um, the South Hills Area Council of Government is actually the largest um, uh, garbage collection contract in the state of Pennsylvania. So the, the idea is by scale to get, to, to get better pricing. I think, I think also jump for the future, looking to the future, jumping off what Brandon was talking about in the last question is, um, you know, kind of like what Paul and I alluded to, we work very well together, but I think, you know, the future of the, of the fire service is, is very different all across the Commonwealth from where it is today. And it, at some point over the next you know decade or so, we're probably going to have to talk about amongst each other about shared fire services. And, and the one thing that I think a lot of people don't talk about is, um, is police officers. Um, I, Paul and I have talked about this a couple of times and you know, it, you don't get a lot of applications for new police officers anymore. Um, so that's a, that's a scary proposition moving forward. Um, that uh, I can tell you last time we hired, we hired two officers last year and we only had 26 applicants and that sounds like a lot, but um, it, it really isn't whenever you sit down and run through everybody. Um, so I think, you know, in the future, it really is going to be looking at doing a, a shared, possibly regional public safety district or something um, in order to, to maintain a level of service that, that people expect and quite frankly, that they require. I, I would like to add, you know, just uh, outside of a, outside of councils of governments, um, you know, our, our DCED study and work with Arkansas, and we've partnered with eight other agencies. But uh, you know, we have uh, we have partnered with with Peters and Nottingham and Can to do a joint uh, purchasing with a with a paver program that has been uh, uh, for for several years now. Paul, I think you may have a better grip on that timeline than I would. Um, but you know, that is a that cuts the price of that that big single use piece of equipment that everybody needs. It cuts it cuts it by four. So that just helps us uh, move forward with with continuing to do a a, a solid row program for for residents. And also more on a local level, you know, South Strabane's partnering with uh, our neighbors um, to the south, the uh, East Washington Borough, with uh, exploring a uh, glass recycling program. So we're we're trying to uh, understand and, and try to fill those holes that have been created by the private sector to go ahead and, and continue to serve uh, to serve residents and in that demand. Wonderful. Uh, we have a couple of more planned questions and maybe we can kind of go through them a, a, a little bit more quickly so that we have room for a few that uh, have joined us in the chat. Um, the, the, uh, Jody and Tyler, this next question is, is for you, but again, uh, most, almost every municipality faces this challenge in one way or another. Uh, the need for better access to broadband internet and increased mobile 5G infrastructure has become very apparent, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. And the abrupt switch to educating our students remotely, not only that, but telework has become huge. And as we're doing right now, a lot of meetings are through uh, technology such as this. How has the lack of high-speed internet, both wired and wireless, impacted your township recently? And what are some of these barriers and opportunities for you uh, that you see for increasing future access? We'll jump oh, in yeah. first. Go, Jody, go ahead. No, go ahead, Tom. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's really difficult for us in some of our areas. In the past few years, we looked at trying to get Comcast and them to expand into our area, but they're kind of stringent on their rules i guess they have they want to see 25 customers per mile is what i was told before i don't know if things have changed but we got as close as to having 22 customers in a stretch of a mile and they still weren't interested in coming out it wasn't 
you know, business viable for, for them to come out and do that for those residents. Now, some residents have paid these companies to extend service directly to, to their homes. Now, it helps them, but it really doesn't help anybody else out. Um, so that's really difficult for us to, to jump in and really do anything if we can't meet the standards that are set by the companies of what they want to do to come out and provide service. So until they kind of change that or are willing to, to work with us, it's, it's kind of up to them to have just customers sitting out there waiting um, for them when they know they need service. Uh, I know during this now, McGuffey School District, which, which we're, district we're in, they're doing a mobile Wi-Fi unit where they're kind of going around areas and, and parking a, a van or whatever it may be to provide access to some of these rural areas. Um, so the, the need is obviously there. Uh, it's just kind of going to be up to these companies to step up and say, or the government to make it mandatory um, to supply these essential services, basically. I mean, they're essential as water and things that these days now that, like you said, internet's for everything. You need it for pretty much everything you need to do. So that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, I, I would kind of echo what Tyler had to say. Um, getting high-speed internet to uh, the rural areas of the township is very difficult. Um, it is cost prohibitive for residents to, you know, generally expand that um, given the distances between properties in some of those areas. And it's very difficult to, to get the um, utilities to come to the table to, to do that um, when it's, it's so spread out. Um, but it certainly has um, put a more intense light on the need to get internet um, to those areas because so many people working from home now and uh, with the education component. And we're realizing that um, it's more of, of a utility than, than a want. It's now a need. Okay. Um, our last question before we open it up to a few from the audience in our last remaining minutes. Uh, and if we could try to try to shorten up your answers just a tiny bit. I mean, we could be here all day, but uh, in the interest of time, uh, we'll, we'll try to, to shorten this up just a tiny bit. To, to everyone, um, as you all know, Washington County is very fortunate to have both the local share account program generated from gaming revenues and Act 13 funding, which is generated from the energy industry. Both programs have components that provide revenues directly to our local municipalities. What are some of the projects and in initiatives that your townships are working on using these resources? Real quickly, um, in Peters Township, local service account money that is received directly by the township, as well as Act 13 money, is always earmarked for um, road resurfacing programs. So we have a large program, about a million six, and those are used for that. The, we occasionally get grants um, under LSA from the county. We have one uh, currently, and it'll be used to extend uh, um, Montour Trail into the new park. Andrew? Yeah, I mean, we're obviously happy to, to be the host community for the casino, and uh, we, we have a great working relationship with them. Um, that provides us a lot of extra uh, resources um, on an annual basis, and we use that money primarily um, for uh, some emergency service funding on a year-to-year -year basis, uh, some capital needs, and then uh, paving, and that's also what we're funding our new building projects from. Wonderful. Um, anyone else? I yeah, would you, yeah echo that you know we focus our lsa funding on capital investment in the community um with a one-time revenue stream like that it's, it's what we view the prudent thing to do and it allows us to expand that infrastructure for our residents and businesses yeah yeah south, south Strabain looks you know we do special projects with that revenue as well as pay for uh you know police services and make sure that 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 is uh, continues to be a robust uh, service that we can provide right and it offsets a lot of taxes that would otherwise be charged to the, the citizens in your townships as well. Uh, uh, looking back, what initiatives and tools have you used to attract uh, and work with businesses in your townships? And looking forward, what kind of new ideas do you think will be useful in the post COVID-19 recovery? So one of the things that Peters Township is fortunate is that uh, we have the Peters Township Chamber of Commerce, and this is a group that we interact with on a regular basis to, uh, for initiatives um, in town. In fact, yesterday I was talking to the, um, the director there, 
suggesting that we explore the possibility of some way to do a Peters Township gift card so that these local businesses that quite not right now are closed down when they, as they begin to open up, there's a way that the community can support its own small businesses by being able to buy a gift card um, that is geared just for the township. Anyone else? I would like to emphasize, you know, South Turbane, uh, you know, we continue to work closely with the Redevelopment Authority and, and the Washington County Chamber of Commerce. But, you know, with permitting with development and meeting to discuss uh, plans for future development, you know, we remain, uh, we remain open uh, to those conversations and uh, it, it's been a good practice here. And uh, overall, I think we, uh, for those communications with businesses that tend to be more of a regulatory uh, type of communication. I think that the municipalities, it would behoove us to, to go ahead and be patient this year, uh, moving forward with some of that, so. Very good. Um, why, well, we're gonna go to some of the questions that have popped up on the chat. And again, for anyone else, well, we do have a little bit of time left. If anyone wants to click on the Q&A at the bottom of their Zoom screen and type in a question, we may be able to get to it. Um, in the interim, we do have a question that's specific to North Strabane Township. There is a vacant commercial property in North Strabane Township near the corner of West McMurray and Morganza Roads, a former Italian bistro or restaurant. Is there any planned use by the township for that property? There's no planned use for any township uh, items to, or, or activities to happen on that parcel. And uh, at this point in time, we don't have any pending plans or uh, for that parcel. I'm familiar with it. Um, I would imagine um, that once that corridor kind of gets upgraded here in the next couple of years, that that might be a little bit more attractive. I hope that answers our question. We have another specific question here for South Strabane. A large portion of South, South Strabane's township's businesses activity is driven by in-person consumer spending at retail operations. With the COVID-19 mitigation efforts in place at retail operations, how has this impacted township revenues? I think this question applies to just about everyone. Today, Washington County, Greene County went yellow. That opens up a bit of retail, but again, we've experienced eight weeks of, of shutdown with face-to-face uh, -face operations. So the question really is for probably anyone can, can help answer, but specifically South Strabane Township. Sure, sure, that's, that's a great question. And, and South Strabane is, is, a, is a commercial community along the 19 corridor. Um, what we have, that data won't become evident for a little time now. Um, we did have an uptick in, uh, we averaged greater in our first quarter mercantile tax collection uh, than we normally would. And that's just more reflective of the fourth quarter spending. Um, that happened to, at the end of 2019. Um, we are fortunate in our, uh, in our roster of commercial properties and businesses to have a Walmart, a Target, Sam's Club, Giant Eagle, um, those, those large retailers that have been, uh, that do provide an essential service that have been allowed to remain open. Um, we have seen a, a robust, uh, um, robust shopping at those locations, um, frankly, in, in response to the COVID-19 and, and the limited options that, that we now have. Um, also, you know, we, we, will, we will take a hit as far as, anticipate take a hit as far as uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle and car sales go. Um, and we are currently looking at those numbers to, uh, you know, we anticipate amending the budget in the coming month or so and, and to move forward with a, uh, with a, uh, a more prioritized type of uh, uh, program this year. So. And, and that was another question that was raised as well, was about your budgets and what, uh, what are the plans, if any uh, changes, of course, have to be made regarding your budgets for your townships because of the, the shutdown. So, else it might be different. Yeah, so North, North Germain, we were, we were pretty aggressive. I think everyone was uh, early on. We actually furloughed, we have uh, 15 employees furloughed right now to try to, to get us through uh, that that uh, that portion hopefully that, that that won't negatively affect the budget in general actually that's my meeting right after the, this is it's with my finance director to kind of figure out where we stand and what our recommendations are going to be to the to the board next year um but or i'm sorry ne next week 
Um, but I do think, I mean, kind of to echo Brandon's sentiments, I think it's, it's going to be, a, a, next year is not going to be easy either. I mean, <laughs> depending on the, the level of, of unemployment that we experience, um, obviously you don't, it, uh, I think a, a lot of our budgets uh, come through earned income tax, and obviously that's going to be down if we, uh, if we, any of our communities experience a high level of, of unemployment. Um, so hopefully that bounces back, um, but it, it really is an unknown at this point. Anyone else on that? Okay, there is a question here um, that's a little different than, than the others. It says, Peters Township is a home rule community. What are the panelists' thoughts about Washington County exploring to become a home rule community county like Allegheny County? And what is that process? Well, the process is provided for under state legislation. What it does is it allows, you know, it allows the municipality, uh, the community to define for itself what its structure of government. It also uh, enables the municipality, if it chooses, to have some latitude in terms of financing sources and, and things like that. Um, I can tell you, uh, I believe that the home rule uh, process works well. I think you end up with a, uh, a uh, municipal government that reflects the needs and desires of uh, of the um, residents. Um, I also believe that if you look around uh, the ring communities uh, around the city of Pittsburgh, it's not by chance, but um, it is by virtue of those home rule charters that those are the communities that are most progressive and, and most uh, uh, in a position to be able to serve the needs of their municipality. So I think, you know, looking at uh, a home rule charter for the county is something that might be worth a look. And, and, um, but, you know, that's really something for the, uh, the county commissioners to decide. Opinions from anyone else? That pretty much summed it up, I guess. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, well, uh, I think unless we have other, I think we've we've covered the vast majority of the the questions because a lot of it was about the budget, about uh, uh, your plans moving forward. Um, again, um, uh, well, this is I can sort of rephrase a little bit of this. We've talked about LSA and about Act Thirteen. We know that this whole time, really, that the uh, casino has been shut down. So we are going to be experiencing quite a cut in the planned revenue coming to the LSA uh, uh, coffers. Yeah. And, we're, and we, we're not quite sure what it is we're gonna be doing with that. So how is, how is the, the, the slowdown with that aspect and the, uh, the slowdown now in the gas industry for Act 13 monies are there certain projects that you were kind of counting on, sort of relying on a little bit, that now you're going to have to adjust or uh, reprioritize moving forward? Well, with regard to the LSA money, uh, if in fact the casinos are held to the contract uh, uh, that they sign, um, that uh, contribution to uh, government is based either upon the uh, revenues generated at the casino or a minimum contribution of $10 million. The fact of the matter is the casinos up to this point have always paid based upon the $10, $10 million. So we're anticipating, and we see this in our first uh, payment that, was, that we received last week, that the casino will in fact meet its, its obligation to the state of Pennsylvania and to the uh, municipalities that surround it. So I don't believe there's going to be uh, uh, a change there. I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, gas drilling. Um, and I think a lot of that's going to depend upon, you know, where your municipality is and location to the gas drilling efforts that are underway. Um, uh, so I'm not sure that it's, it's clear that we can have a vision of what that means for right now. And, and to echo Paul, uh, you know, what my belief is that the casino I mean, I'm assuming eventually it's going to open up. And, you know, I, I think that people are going to want to get out and do things. I think that, you know, my, my personal opinion has been that we probably are going to get all the money that we, we usually get. It's just going to be at different times of the year. Um, so I think that we're going to just have it delayed and, and whatnot. Um, we did get a little proactive on that. We froze all of our capital spending um, that was, that had not already been spent out of the, uh, out of our, out of our capital budget, which is primarily funded through the, 
through the meadows. Um, but, uh, you know, and we're probably not going to unfreeze that until we get to a point where the, we know the casino is going to be reopened. Um, and we're just trying to be practical about that. Um, what specific projects that freezes, um, it, it froze our, uh, we were planning on putting a deck hockey rink in the, uh, in the park this summer. Um, we think that's probably going to be delayed. We're going to do some remodeling of our public works building. Um, and then we also typically contribute uh, $15,000 towards the Canada McMillan School District uh, Scholarship Fund out of there. And uh, that's also been frozen. Well, it looks like we've used up about all of our time in the remaining minutes. I want to thank every one of you for participating in this sem this symposium, <laughs> this, this town hall, this round table square table, whatever it is we're calling, <laughs> we're calling it these days. I truly appreciate all of your time and all of your comments. And thank, I thank all of the attendees who took the time to, uh, to join us. Um, and uh, we wish you all a wonderful day and uh, stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you face to face in the near future, we hope. So. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much, Senator. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you.